On September 7th, 1996, arguably the most influential American hip-hop artist of all times, Tupac Shakur, was fatally shot in Las Vegas. The police never charged anyone with the murder, and the case is technically still open. In this episode, we're going back to 1996 to give you the full picture of what actually happened on the night when Tupac was killed. Before we proceed to the actual night of the shooting, here's some context. In the mid-90s, hip-hop's going out of stealth mode to become the music of the Pepsi generation. West Coast and East Coast were the two competing forces. On the West Coast, the Death Row Records with Suga Knight as the CEO and Tupac as the most dominant artist. On the East Coast, the Bad Boy Records with Puff Daddy as the CEO and Biggie Smalls as the massive star. Suga and Puff hated each other big time. Rumors say that someone from Bad Boy Records ended up offering $1 million to an LA gang Southside Crips to kill both Suge and Tupac. The offer wasn't accepted. Now, back to the night. On September 7th, Tupac was attending Mike Tyson's fight for the world title at MGM Grand Casino in Las Vegas. Whenever Tyson would have a fight in the 90s, it would be like the hardcore version of the Super Bowl. Massive crowds of people, celebrities, drug dealers, and gang members all would come to Vegas for the Rumble. Some high-profile members of the Southside Crips gang were also attending the match. So, Tyson quickly knocked down his opponent and the match was over in less than two minutes. Right after the fight, Tupac was planning to head up to the club 662, where he was scheduled to perform at the after party. On his way out of MGM Grand, Tupac ran into Orlando Anderson, a member of the Southside Crips gang. Apparently, Orlando had recently confronted and assaulted Tupac's friend. The security cameras captured a fight scene where Tupac, Suge, and the bodyguards knocked Orlando to the floor and beat him up badly. After a rapid scuffle, Tupac exited the casino as if nothing had happened. Well, little did he know that this conflict would cost him his life. Humiliated, Orlando Anderson regrouped with the other gang members, and they quickly came up with a plan to retaliate. One crucial detail here is that Orlando was a nephew of Keith D., one of the leaders of the Southside Crips gang. Remember the $1 million offer? Keith D. was the one who the offer was given to. The only reason why he didn't take it was because he wasn't interested in the money that much, since he'd already made a fortune on selling drugs. And also, he was cool with Suge. But after Tupac and Suge jumped on his nephew, he changed his mind. Gangsters knew about Tupac's concert at the club 662. Four gang members, including Orlando and Keith D., jumped in their white Cadillac and started cruising the strip looking for the offender. Before long, they finally spotted Tupac's caravan. At the intersection of East Flamingo Boulevard and Koval Lane, the white Cadillac pulled alongside the black BMW with Suge on the driver and Tupac on the passenger seats. The back window of the Cadillac rolled down and Orlando opened fire. Tupac was hit four times, twice in the chest, once in the arm, once in the thigh. Suge was hit in the head by a fragmentation. After arriving at the scene, police and paramedics took both Suge and Tupac to the nearest hospital, where six days later, Tupac was pronounced dead at the age of 25. The criminal investigation quickly got into a dead end, as the police were not able to trace the white Cadillac, and apparently, no one had seen the killers. While Orlando Anderson was identified as a suspect, he never got charged with the murder, and was later killed in an unrelated gang shooting. This is the story of Tupac Shakur's death. This is how it was. All right, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss new episodes.